I'm going to talk about the anatomy of a phone gap app. Uh, when you create an app, you get you create all these folders, merges, platforms, plugins, www. Um, actually, on the root level, it's, it doesn't really matter all that much. It's in the platforms where you create your iOS or your Android versions. These are the build from the iOS. Uh, www. These are the web files. This is the sort of class definitions of your um, app. We'll get into this in a minute. Um, same thing with build, Cordova. This is the um, this is the phone gap stuff. And more phone gap stuff. Um, the thing you should uh, keep in mind are these files called config.xml. This tells your SDK how to build your app. Um, in the www folder, the config XML looks like this. Normally, you don't need to touch this. Uh, a lot of it's automatic. This file contains your your icons, uh, different um, platforms, and different resolutions. It also has this thing called access origin. Um, basically, this is a whitelist, meaning it can allow certain webs it allows content from websites to come into your into your application right now this is all local but you don't define that there you define that in another um, config file that would be in your app name and there's another config file in the app name This is the d XML that controls the behavior of the app. And it also has an access origin. This is where you would um, tell the app to allow something like Google or Google Maps to be viewed in your app. Uh, if you want all websites, obviously, you just use the uh, asterisk. Okay. So that's the basic gist of things. Let's first look at the sort of generic index page that's generated. From last week's class, uh, I mentioned that you don't really need you don't need this index.js until you want to load a plugin. What this file is, JS. It's basically a class. Um, we're not gonna use this because it's not. Um, we haven't gone over classes yet, but we'll we'll do a simpler version of this. And all it is is basically just a, a event listener. Um, basically, attaches an, some sort of event to an object like a document. That um, it listens to the document on where the device is ready so this is like like a on ready event so when it's ready it calls a function called on device ready and here's and it calls another function called receive event what it does is it's um it flashes that device ready uh, tag in the html well Use a similar script, um, but maybe a little bit simpler in terms of um, not using classes, class definitions. But first, let's attach a plugin. So on the website, there's an API referencer. The plugins are basically these categories of camera accelerometer. Um, I won't go over all of them. I'll wait till I see what you you're planning to do in terms of in terms of your final project. 
um, and we can go deeper into relevant plugin. I can see you guys will use the storage a lot in terms of storing data onto the iPhone so, or some other device. This is another handy one called connection. It tests to see if you have internet connection. You don't need to test it on an actual device. You can use the simulator for it. Some plugins depend on a device like a uh, accelerometer. You can't really you can't really test that on a simulator or a camera as well. I have to browse to my app. That's CD documents. I think I named it mobile list. So that's that. So now to install the plugin, um, on the website it says Cordova, but we defined our, it's basically the same thing, um, but we, I defined mine as hand, uh, as PhoneGap instead of Cordova. PhoneGap is built on top of Cordova, obviously. So I'll just copy this, but instead of Cordova, I type phone gap. Add plugin. You have to add local first, apparently. So do phone gap. L help. Local. So the plugin is in the local event. So to install the plugin, with PhoneGap, it's PhoneGap, local, plugin add, and then the URL. Add it successfully. So now we could see our file structure. Mobile. Platform. iOS. Mobile. That's the name of our app. And in the plugins folder, it had added these um, header and main files for for the app okay and in the config xml it added this xml tag called um, network status and a name and a value to it so it did it automatically you didn't you don't have to do that manually when you go through the terminal Okay, so the source files of the plugin is added, and now we need to write JavaScript to interact with that source file. Just to mention, that's how PhoneGap works. It uses JavaScript to go through an API and communicates with the, um, the application through JavaScript. So in my, let's say my index.html, I'll open this guy up. I'll skip that index.js file. We'll write our own document ready. I'll move this up into the header. Okay, we'll write our own script. So the first line you should write to wait for the device for the API to load you write document dot add event listener device ready this is a an event in phone gap and it waits until the app is initialized and it calls a function called on device ready you can name it anything you want but um, we'll use this as a convention so you write 
function on device ready. And when it is ready, um, we'll call another function called check connection. We could write the code from check connection and put it in here, but it's easier to read. Check connection. Okay. So in here, we'll create a, a variable um, that stores the connection type of the device. We then create uh, an object called states. States basically will hold the values of all the different uh, network states uh, like Wi-Fi or cell phone or none. Uh, the real main important thing is when you're checking for network um, whether you have anything or don't have anything is that's a real important thing it's basically none or none or all so basically then you would write an if condition saying if the network is equal to none then alert a message saying you need a network for this app to work so basically all this event stuff is in that index.js file but it's easier to read um, so I'd recommend using this or if you think the JS index.js file is more convenient go ahead and use that convention so we'll test this guy out let's launch our simulator go ahead and run the simulator So there's no error message. I'll go ahead and turn off my internet connection. Turn off my Wi-Fi. And I'll run it again. See if an error message pops up. There you go. Pops up an error message saying you need a network for this app to work. Okay, so now we know that plugin worked. It's as easy as that. 